Good evening. Investigators know more about anthrax that killed a New York woman yesterday, but they're still baffled about how she was infected. I'm Kylie Gandalf. And I'm Dustin Grove. A top health official says anthrax sent to Capitol Hill and media outlets is indistinguishable. All tests of possible sources have turned out negative. Investigators are now trying to piece together the hospital worker's last days to find out how she was infected. Have an isolated case like this with no connection to anything that we have experienced thus far is very perplexing. That's why there's an extraordinary intensity in the investigation to try and sort these things out. And a stamp fulfillment services facility in Kansas City, Missouri also tested positive for anthrax spores. Investigators found that bacteria after conducting preliminary tests on garbage bags originally from the Brentwood Postal Facility. Officials say the spores don't threaten the public or the facility's employees, but they are starting to prescribe antibiotics just as a precaution. Individuals at this time that have been reported. These are environmental samples that say that anthrax has been present in that facility. The center is housed in a complex of caves in uh, northeast Kansas City. Employees at a maintenance center in Indianapolis are taking antibiotics tonight, but only as a precaution. Anthrax spores were found on a postal machine at the critical parts center on the city's west side. The center does not process mail, but postal machines are cleaned and repaired at the site. Governor O'Bannon said yesterday that the equipment is believed to have been sent from the Brentwood Mail Processing Center in Washington, D.C. area. Two Brentwood employees recently died after inhaling anthrax there. And officials found small traces of anthrax today at a post office in Lake Worth, Florida. They shut down the facility while experts moved in to clean the building. Authorities now suspect more than one piece of mail in the area infected the first known anthrax target. That was in Boca Raton. And in a Delaware County man here in Muncie is in jail tonight because he told an anthrax joke. Police arrested David Jones after he left a note at the Hoosier Heartland Truck Plaza that said there was anthrax in the restroom there. Records show Jones admitted to placing a white powdery substance on the counter with a threatening note. Police found no anthrax, though. Jones is being charged with conveying false information and faces a five-year prison term. And the U.S. Pentagon says the United States is working to land more warriors in Afghanistan to increase pressure on the Taliban. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld says they'll pinpoint targets and coordinate with opposition forces. He says the troops are, quote, cocked and ready to go. Rumsfeld adds that when the extra U.S. forces do arrive, the bombing campaign will become even more intense. California police are closely watching four major bridges tonight. They claim to have credible evidence that terrorists might be planning a rush hour attack on those bridges. Police will closely monitor the Golden Gate Bridge and the Bay Bridge, both in San Francisco, the St. Vincent Thomas Bridge at the Port of Los Angeles, and the Coronado Bridge in San Diego. The U.S. Coast Guard and California Highway Patrol will both provide tightened security beginning this Friday and November until November the 7th. And security here in Muncie is also tighter than usual tonight. As U.S. government officials urge cities to remain on alert, local government is also doing their part. Well, those usually go down the middle of the, of the road. Walk down West Main Street and you'll now see them lining the sidewalk in front of the county building. Whatever works, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. And county commissioners hope it will work. Responding to the government's call to be on high alert, they decided to install the barriers for safety. A welcome sight for Mary Jo Barton, who works in the building. I, I think that's going to help. It's just a scary thought when you think about what could happen. I mean, everybody thinks it won't happen here, but you never know. Also added to the building, increased security and better ways to identify employees and guests. Still, some remain skeptical. I think it's senseless. Why do you think it's senseless? Whatever happens is going to happen. Lynette Burton works across the street. To her, a sad symbol of today's new way of life. It looks sad. It's, it's a sad state we've come to, but I think it has to be. Those barricades will stay in front of the county building indefinitely. And a scary flight for some passengers on a Northwest Airlines jet this morning. Flight 191 made an unscheduled stop at Detroit's Metro Airport after a passenger found a note tucked inside a magazine. The plane was flying from Washington, D.C.'s Reagan International Airport to Minneapolis when the pilot was alerted of a possible threat to the aircraft. The pilot decided to land in Detroit just as a precaution. The plane was escorted to, do to Detroit by two F-16s.
John Shainer joins us now with first forecast, John. To, to welcome us into November. And a kind nice of a, day for it, Kind too. of a strange, warm breeze no almost. Kidding. A very warm first day of November, but that will change a little bit. We'll still be right around normal, but our first forecast tonight shows us some light rain is on the way in the overnight hours. Our low temperature will drop to right around 50 degrees. Of course, I'll have more on the forecast and show you exactly when that rain's going to get here a little later on, guys. All right, okay, thanks. thank you, John. Well, tailgating traditions here at Ball State may be gone for good. A task force of students and administrators have set new guidelines for tailgating before football games here at Ball State. That's right. News Center's Alyssa Rossame joins us now with the details. And uh, what can we expect at the new tailgating sites? Well, Dustin and Kylie, there have been a number of guidelines set in place for tailgating in response to what Dean of Students Randy Hyman calls out-of-control crowds. Tailgating will now begin at 10 a.m. and end at 1 p.m. Glass bottles, kegs, hard liquor, and indoor furniture such as couches will not be allowed in the tailgating area. Tailgaters are also encouraged to bring ID as there will be random checks of people who appear to be under the legal drinking age. Hyman says they will increase the number of on-duty police officers to enforce these new guidelines, which are not harsh compared to some other universities. We've done a lot of uh, study of other universities, uh, some in our own Mid-American Conference and others around the country, and in, uh, in most all of those instances, those institutions have put in place guidelines very similar to our own. In fact, many have far more restrictive guidelines than, than what we have uh, developed and adopted here. While some students are afraid the enjoyment will be taken out of tailgating, Hyman says there will still be lots of safe, responsible fun. The tailgating guidelines will be enforced for this Saturday's football game. Reporting live from the news desk, Alyssa Rossame, News Center 43. Okay, we'll look forward to see what happens there. Thanks, Alyssa. And U University police say a fire near the architecture building on Tuesday night was probably an arson. According to police reports, the Japanese tea house next to the architecture building caught fire just before midnight. The chairman of the Department of Architecture says that tea house is used for Japanese tea ceremonies. He says the damage on the tea house is significant, but he has no financial estimate. Well, even though work continued today at Riverside and McKinley Avenue, construction on Ball State's new music instruction building is now scheduled, rescheduled for next March. Contractors' bids were above the architect's estimates, and university officials are now working to get a better building for less money. Most of the parking lot at that corner will remain open until further notice. And from our partners at the Ball State Daily News, here's a look at tomorrow's headlines tonight. This weekend marks the official dedication of the Art and Journalism Building. Find out what goes into making the dedication possible. Plus, the women's soccer team is on their road to their first MAC tournament. And finally, the cards... Take on Central Michigan in this week's football game. The DN Sports staff has a preview. All that and more in tomorrow's edition of the Ball State Daily News. Well, there's good news for Indiana's employment front. That story coming up. And Ball State basketball back in full swing. We're live at Worthen Arena. Still ahead on New Center 43. Indiana's employment picture looks better than expected following September's terror attacks. Unemployment dropped a tenth of a percent from August to September, but state officials are warning not to celebrate too soon. Indiana Workforce Development says post-attack layoffs might not be seen on paper for at least a few months. Well, if you don't like the governor's new tax plan, you'll have a chance to voice your opinion. Hoosiers can tell state officials what they think of the new plan at six hearings around the state. If the plan is approved, it will raise sales and individual income taxes to help reduce some local property taxes. The state would pay the difference in property taxes. The final hearing will be right here in Muncie, December 17th. And John Shaner joins us now with weather, and it's just kind of a funny November day. Sure not was. quite what you'd expect. I'm not complaining. No. Yeah, uh, <laughs> funny if you mean excellent. Nice and warm. Uh, nice dry conditions, too. A look at the radar, though. Shows a few showers poised to move into Indiana. I'll tell you when they'll get here, and look at your weekend forecast coming up next on New Center at 930. Good evening. Once again, a very warm day across east central Indiana. Our high all the way up to 69, well above our average high of 57, starting off the month of November with a low temperature of 51 when you woke up this morning at around 7:12 your sunrise time. Taking a look at high temperatures across the state, we saw 64 in South Bend, 69 here in Muncie, and a few places in the state even made it up to 70, especially in Evansville. Currently in downtown Muncie, we've got cloudy skies, temperature right at 64 degrees, humidity is on the rise at 53%, and southwest winds helping to bring 
bring in that very warm air. National satellite view shows a swath of clouds associated with this cold front that's uh, poised to move into Indiana. Right now, the heart of the showers are across western Illinois. Those will move into our area later tonight. The big focus in the weather story uh, right now, though, is some tropical development. Tropical Storm Michelle in the Caribbean. As we see, it's right here between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. It's moving to the north-northwest, but very slowly, and it's over some nice warm water. So it'll have plenty of time to intensify, and it's expected to make its way up here and then cut across here along the Florida Keys and possibly nip the lower end of Florida, the peninsula there, as we go into the beginning of next week, Sunday and into Monday. So something to watch out for. No tropical development here in Indiana. Just a few light scattered showers across uh, northern and western Illinois right now. Those showers will pick up in intensity, we believe, across the rest of the evening and then move into Indiana. We'll probably won't see the heart of the showers until late tonight and possibly into early tomorrow morning. So when you wake up tomorrow, a few isolated showers as well. There you see the cold front as we move into tonight. That's going to push into Indiana back behind it. Very nice high pressure, keeping us very nice and very dry for the remainder of the weekend. Low temperatures tonight. We see low temperatures will bottom out in the low to mid 50s. So things should be pretty good sleeping weather if you're going to be uh, indoors tonight or outdoors. Uh, tonight, light rain though, uh, plaguing us just a little bit, not much, just on the scattered side, low down to 51 degrees and winds out of the southwest. Tomorrow morning when you wake up for work or that 8 a.m. class, we'll see isolated showers, just the last remainders of that system as that cold front works its way through, temperature of 57 degrees. Tomorrow's weather map shows us that uh, Cold front and the associated low pressure system moving off to the east back behind it. High pressure keeps us very calm, keeps us very dry for the weekend and into next week. Doesn't cool us off too much though, which is a nice thing. Take a look at high temperatures tomorrow. We should be in the mid 60s. Weather center forecast then. Sun and clouds, a mixture of those uh, clearing as we go into tomorrow night and a high of 64. Winds after the cold front passes will be shifting to the northwest, bringing that slightly cooler air. Things are very nice, right around normal though for the weekend. Saturday and Sunday, Partly to mostly sunny and temperatures right in the 60s, and then we drop down to the upper 50s right about normal for Monday. Uh, so very dry, very seasonable. Perfect football weather for the game tomorrow or Saturday against Central Michigan. So, so you said 60 is normal for this time of year? 57 is the normal uh, okay. high for today. Okay, so, so upper we're... 50s will get back to normal. Hmm, okay, thanks, John. Doesn't uh, exactly seem like basketball weather yet. <laughs> Not quite. Even though we are coming up on it. Indiana's favorite pastime is back again, and plenty of fans are ready for this year's season. It's exciting, I suppose, being Indiana and all. Basketball's live. Yeah, I don't, I'm not much of a football fan. Basketball's my thing. Justin Herbert here now with a look at sports and uh, looking forward to basketball too, I'm, I'm sure. Yes, I am. And tonight, the women started all off at Northern Arena. We'll be live when we come back. So stick around. Sports is next. team starts a new chapter this evening, a chapter with a title it's never had before, Expectation. Last year, the Cardinals had their best record ever at 19-9 and and returned all five starters. Under new head coach Tracy Roller, the Cards look to make a serious run at the MAC championship. Tonight, they had their first test run against RTU Klondika at Worthen to, as we go to the highlights. The fresh new face of women's basketball calling the shots, but not getting good results all early on. Jonna Goff takes it up the court, looks for the open receiver, and it's picked off. Sorry, I'm still in football mode. Klondika takes it the distance for the easy two, but Goff would find redemption in Julie just a few baskets later, and she drills the tray. The cards start flowing once again. Second quarter, cards spreading the floor very nicely. Goff finds Tamar, who finds Amy Zerker to just again for three more. Cards go on to win tonight, 90 to 72, thanks to 52 second half points. Right now, News Center reporter Steve Bishop is live at Worthen Arena for a wrap up of tonight's game. Steve? Uh, yes, 
Yes, uh, Justin, thanks very much. Uh, we're live at Worthen Arena. The Lady Cardinals with a big 93-75 win over RTU Klondike. Uh -huh. A big win for the Lady Cardinals. We're joined now by Angus Thor Angus Thorpe, the men's assistant basketball coach. You had your men in for a little shoot around right after the game. You saw the women's game. Uh, what did you think of the lady team? Oh, they're very enjoyable to watch. I, know that, I think they took 38 threes tonight, so it's very fast-paced. They're up and down the floor, and I think they're going to have a very good season. Obviously, high expectations for the women's team. Let's talk about the men's team for a minute. Yeah, had a little shoot around right after the game. Um, obviously, what, what, what kind of kinks are you going to look? What, uh, what's going to be? Uh, what are you going to look for uh, for the uh, first opening game uh, tomorrow night? Well, we just want to go out and play hard and, and develop our style and figure out what our kids really need to work on as we get closer to playing the real season. We have two exhibition games to do that. Uh, we just want to come out and play well, play hard, and see what happens. Obviously, see what happens. And as for that regular season, you guys have got the Maui Invitational coming up. Your first game is against Kansas. Mm -hmm. Very tough challenge, very tough tournament. Talk about it for a minute. Well, it's very tough with Duke and Kansas and Seton Hall. I think you've got four of the top ten teams in the country that are going to be in that tournament. For us, it's, it's a measuring stick for us. We'll find out exactly where we're at, and hopefully it'll prepare us for the max season. Okay. Coach Thorpe, thanks very much. Uh, we'll, we'll look forward to that tomorrow night. Uh, big win, for, of course, for the Lady Cardinals at 93-75. Men's car men team, they're playing tomorrow night. Uh, Justin will have more on that in moments. Right now, we are live at Worthen Arena. Steve Bishop, News Center 43 Sports. Justin? Thank you very much, Steve. As Steve alluded to, the women's basketball team had the floor tonight, but tomorrow night the spotlight is on the men's team. Tim Buckley's team will face Marathon Oil at a 7 o'clock exhibition. After a week of scrimmaging each other, guard Patrick Jackson says his teammates are ready to see some different competition. We've been up on each other for, you know, like two, three weeks now, so it's going to be good to, to be able to get another team in here and see if what we're doing is really going to work and just, you know, just see how we're all going to gel together. And former Ball State standout Bonzi Wells had a big night against Golden State, showing versatility by scoring inside. And then here on the fast break, as he gets the dish from Damon Stoudemire for the thunder dunk. And also, he got it done from outside. He hits the three and has a career-high 33 points as Portland wins 92-87. to And it's sectional finals week in high school football, and it doesn't get any better when two local teams go head-to-head -head for the sectional crown. We have that in a big way here in Delaware County as the Bearcats of Muncie Central take on the Delta Eagles. Both coaches have mutual respect for each other, but they realize that the loser starts basketball practice. The big thing about Delta is right now they're the defending champs in this sectional. Uh, one time they were ranked number one in our uh, 4A rankings, and now they're fifth or sixth. I'm not sure which it is currently, but uh, you know they're the team to beat. And at this point, we feel like if we have a right to be a sectional champion, then we have to beat the defending sectional champs. You know they've got a good football team. I think that. Um, you know, when we watch them on film, there's, there's nothing about Muncie Central that we're going to look past or whatever. I mean, it, it, it'll be a great matchup. And that's all for sports. And uh, also, the, uh, in the World Series is tonight. It's tied right now, so we'll have to keep our eye on that. The Yankees and Diamondbacks going at it for the championship. Okay. Looking forward to that. Thank Thanks you. So much. Thank you. Well, when News Center at 9.30 continues, John Shaner will have one last look at your weather. Plus, News Center reporter Josh Witzman shows us some smiling faces in the last place you'd expect it. Stay tuned. Quick recap of your weather forecast tomorrow morning. Isolated showers wrapping up, temperature of 57. Tomorrow, sun and clouds and a high of 64. And your weekend is looking glorious. Temperatures in the 60s and nice sunshine. Okay, thanks, John. Looking forward to that nice weekend. Finally tonight, imagine a place where your whole day revolves around making people laugh. A place like that exists at Baum Memorial Hospital right here in Muncie. News Center reporter Josh Witzman joins us live at the news desk with more on this story. Josh, seeing smiles at a hospital is a little unusual, isn't it? Well, Kylie, it used to be rare to hear laughter ringing out from the halls of Bob Memorial until the hospital started a new program, the Library of Life, Love, and Laughter. It began in 1989 and strives to bring humor and encouragement to those who are sick. Take a look at the library and you'll be amazed at its accomplishments. Take a look at the folks who run it and you'll be amazed at their dedication. Inside this hospital, hidden among medical journals, you'll find one unique place. The Library of Life, Love, and Laughter. Its only goal, to make you smile. Most people when they're in the hospital are under a lot of stress. Um, when they use the library services, they can at least forget about their 
stress for a while. The library offers books, videos, VCRs, and anything else that can brighten up your day. Yeah, I think anything that can take your mind away from you know, what your problem might be for just a, a little bit uh, is going to help be a benefit to uh, your recovery. It's inside this hospital where Kathy spends five days a week working to make people laugh. After all, she believes in the healing power that laughter offers. But Kathy also benefits from those smiles. When I walk into a patient's room, if, if I'm feeling down and I'm doing something to cheer them up, it cheers me up too. It's, it's a great job. Watching this woman in action, you have to ask yourself, what keeps her going and where does she get her drive? I don't, don't see it as drive as much as being pulled along. Um, this job is, is great. I mean, you walk in and say, who can I cheer up today? And what a job. I mean, this is just a great, a great thing to be able to do. So with that said, Kathy is on yet another mission to create a smile. The library services are offered to patients free of charge, and the volunteers try to make the library's hours flexible to meet patient needs. Reporting live from the news desk, Josh Witzman, News Center 43. Dustin and Kylie, back to you. Thanks a lot, Josh. Good story. Thanks, Josh. Well, thanks for joining us for News Center at 930. I'm Kylie Gandoff. And I'm Dustin Grove. News Center is an official CNN student bureau. Be sure to tune in to News Center Monday at 530. Have a great weekend. Good night.